everybody. I'm Wendy Lowe, and I'm excited for you to meet a dear friend and a former ambassador of Hawaii, as she represented Hawaii at the Miss America pageant as one of our very own Miss Hawaii 1987. Today, we are coming to you live from my home in downtown Honolulu and from the studios of Think Tech in downtown Honolulu, where we share the views of over 35 dynamic hosts covering very diverse topics. Today, I would like to, you to get to know the heart of my friend, Miss Luana Alapa, as she shares her OHA journey and knows her purpose for running for the Office of Hawaiian Affairs. What Luana would like you to take away from today's discussion is staying focused and keeping your eyes on the prize. It's all about staying positive despite negative people and being able to see good in everything. E como mai, Luana Alapa. Aloha, thank you so much, Wendy, for having me. I, I, I have a feeling we're gonna have a wonderful, fun time. <laughs> well, we only got 30 minutes, so we'll have a wonderful <laughs> short time. <laughs> All right, okay. <laughs> so, you know, I knew you as the, you know, you were Miss Hawaii 1987. Okay, yes. so that's how I knew you, Miss Luana Alapa, Miss Hawaii, 1987. So please tell me about your reign and what did you do as Miss Hawaii? Well, um, during my year of reign, it, it's, it's been a magical year. It was a magical year for me because of the fact is that not only are you selected by an esteemed panel of judges to represent your state in the National Miss America pageant, but also you're an ambassador, an ambassador of Aloha, uh, like a cultural host, so to speak as we, uh, uh, Miss Hawaii's travel um, is, she travels all over the world promoting uh, our Hawaiian culture, the beauty of Hawaii to many of the visitors who will come to Hawaii as well. And at the same time, you know, I had a chance to meet a ton of people from all walks of life, uh, from celebrities like the Dolly Partons, the George Michaels, I don't think you guys remember those people, but they were uh, <laughs> uh, also on the Robin Leach lifestyles of the rich and famous shows. Oh, wow, look at you, girl. I, I swear I had an incredible year, but wow. not like meeting the most awesome people, but it was also people in general from the different countries that I traveled to, from Australia, New Zealand. I went to Rotonga, Samoa, Tahiti. Uh, I've, I've been to places like China, Beijing, China, and so forth. Just a, a, a wonderful places that I, was, I had an opportunity to share my love for Hawaii as well as being Miss Hawaii. And it, it's just an honor. Um, anyone who has had that opportunity uh, at that time well, it was, was really, really well taken care of. And of course, it was all about showcasing Hawaii. And the years I've been involved in pageantry uh, from that point after it was all about helping other women to achieve their goals in the pageant industry. So it wasn't just about me, but it was also ensuring that others, others will have that opportunity. So I got involved in the pageant industry as a uh, a state director for the Mrs. Hawaii pageant, the Miss Hawaii for America. They all fall under the same umbrella, so I hold the franchise wow. rights to it. Um, and of course, um, I have a daughter, by the way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, you know, she got involved. She wanted to, you know, try her hand at it. And uh, naturally, with the support of myself, along with many others who wanted to get on board to help her, um, wow. she became Miss Hawaii Teen USA. So it was, it was a for her, it's just, that was it. It wasn't like, I'm going to be running pageants forever. No, it was a one-shot deal for her, just like me. One time at Miss Hawaii, and that's mm -hmm. it. Now we move on to other things, and I, for me, right. I see that. But I don't think you really moved on, because I know that you continue mentoring a lot of young yes. women right. to match right. out who Keakua created them to be. And so that's the whole idea, like even myself being involved with almost 25 years under my belt with all of you young ladies. Yes. Um, it's because we want to find the right representative so that she could showcase Hawaii and represent Hawaii in the best light. And so you've got a big job on your hands because there are oh many, qual many qualified young women here in Hawaii and your role Absolutely. is to guide them and make sure that they just, just make sure that they are maxing out who they were created to be. So you know, the, the whole kudos. idea, yeah. And do you know the whole idea behind the women itself? For me, it's, I, I enjoy working with them and seeing them grow from the beginning with like zero confidence to, mm -hmm towards the pageant, it's like a whole different woman that has come about because of the workshops exactly. that I incorporate. We teach everything from interview techniques, poison and posture for the stage. How to walk, how to sit, you know. Exactly, how to enter the room, right? all that. Mm -hmm. You know, because some people plop themselves up on the chair. Mm -hmm. but that would be me with the legs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> me too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so the legs so, you know, you're the girl from Molokai, and I'm the girl from Miley, so... Right. So, so a 
lot of training going on there, but if you can make it as Miss Hawaii, I tell you, your job is a big job, but very well done, and, and you took that responsibility, and I'm sure it'll never stop because you'll always no, be I, I as it a pageant mama. Yeah, I enjoy it because it's it's been a part of me for now 30, almost 30 years that I've been producing these events and meeting women from all walks of life. And I love that, love their backgrounds and so forth. But I think more than anything, it's always about seeing uh, the fact that they, they can become the better version of themselves just Amen. by learning Amen. how. And they're not really taught that in their homes per se. Yes. So joining something like this would probably help them along the it, way. It surely does. I mean, I've seen it done and I've seen you create. So and oh, you're going to continue. So keep keep building way. Hawaii's women as beautiful as we can. And it, it's not just the outside, but it's the heart. Nope. And Absolutely. that's the beauty that yeah. the heart and the brain are working. And I always tell them, we can paint the barn, but it's the heart <laughs> that we can't put, we can't change. Absolutely. But they got the right heart and the right mind to represent. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen, girl. That's wow. And I know that... You didn't just stop with those with those girls, those women of Hawaii. But tell us a little bit about your family and your your children. Well, you know, um, you know, they have the, the highlights of Miss Hawaii, and you know, everyone thinks that you have this wonderful life and so forth after Miss Hawaii. Uh, no, it, it's come it's about reality. Okay, <laughs> no. no, I don't have the castle in the sky and, and all that. You know, hoopla that goes with it. No, you know, I, I got married um, and I raised uh, two children, but you know, I also um, suffered from a broken marriage. And I became a single mother in the early 2000s. And I was responsible now because I used to be a stay-at-home mom. And now I'm on my own raising two children. And to add to the mix, I added two more children, foster siblings, Native Hawaiian foster siblings, who used to come to our neighborhood. My house was the kids' central. Everybody was oh, there. Oh, I love it. I did everything for the neighborhood kids. I threw love it. Parties, Christmas parties. I had ice cream Sunday night. I had movie night. And these two kids in particular... Um, came around a lot and pretty soon they didn't leave my house. They didn't want to go home. Yeah. And I was like, you know, it's 12 o'clock midnight. It's school. Don't you go home? Bye-bye. Oh, <laughs> right. But then I learned more about their background as they shared some insights, what happened to mm. them. They lost yes. their mother when, to cancer. And yes. uh, she was really, actually, she's leaving her husband at that time. And the father, as I found out, was abusive and so forth. So they lived a, a, a life that wasn't, you know, the normal. And so when they saw what I did for my kids, as well as for the neighborhood kids, they wanted that. They wish they had that. How come we can't have that? Wow. And, um, and then one day I got a call from a CPS saying that they had the children. If no one wants them, would I take them? And what am what I going to say? blessing. No, I said, of course I'll take them. The one who wants them. That's just awful to feel, you know, for children to feel not wanted. And so, but it, it took a, a little while before that happened because they, they ended up with their mother's sister, and that was a whole nother episode. Wow. It was not good. Wow. And so you said, I will, and you did, and you adopted. Yeah, so you, you were yeah. responsible for four yes. amazing yes. young adults yes. in our community. I'm so proud of you when I saw that. I was like, you go, girl. And you're able, you were capable, and why not? So, yeah, you know, I, I just love that. That's what you've done. And, you, and on top of that, forever. when you think about single parents, and I take my, I, my hats off to them, I love them that have to raise uh, their family and go to work and everything else, which is what I did. But at the same time, I wanted to still have a sense of normalcy mm -hmm. for my four kids. And that was the way I, I ran my home. So there was open, loving, there was no fighting. I mean, there was ever, ne never any of that. It wow. was support of each other and so forth so the kids are a reflection of you the, the kids are always a reflection of a reflection of their parents right you know? i mean yeah if you want to see how a, a person is look at their home right Just look and at their right yes. yeah you yes. look at their home and how exactly. and how neat it is or what it looks like you know i mean and right. you can, not that we're judging but you can have an idea oh, you know absolutely. yeah absolutely. and i know that you know in the community i volunteered with many different organizations like yes. the food bank and Many years with the Hotel Coalition with Mr. Noel Trainer as my director and working with him. I missed him so much. He did so much for the Hilton and the community. But I know now that you've always been community-minded as well. And you've done so much for our state. And I know you've been very active with the food bank. So share with us a little bit. What have you been doing with the food bank recently? You know, so, well, a lot of my work has been in the uh, volunteering uh, for a variety of um, organizations, such as I mentioned, Susan G. Coleman, and there's Toys for Tots. I, I work with the um, volunteer with the hotel and travel industry, the HUDS program, IHS, Project Shine. I've done work with Salvation Army and so forth. 
But the one aspect that I love uh, is being a part of the food bank because to me, food is your lifeline. You know, without food, we can't survive. And, um, and you'd be surprised the people that are going without food, you know, they'll mm-hmm. have maybe one meal and that's it. That's the rest of their day is done. So I wanted to get more involved with the Hawaii Food Bank, which I've done. And, uh, and at the same time, I really enjoy the fact that of giving back, of, 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 and of course, another part is besides food is water. Water is such an important aspect of our life because, you know, it, it also sustains our body, you know, flush out toxins and so forth. So I, I try and lubricates our joints, especially getting old, okay? And so, so the, the, you know, all that sets in. So you'd be surprised at things that happen as we get older. But water, mm-hmm. I've always found a wonderful tool, a wonderful must have to have in our life. But aside from, the, aside from that though, uh, the food distribution, what I've been involved in with the Hawaii Food Bank has just been amazing because of the smiles and the faces of the people who receive them. It is that, that makes my day. That wow. is really and I, I know that not only do you volunteer with the food bank, um, and now of course the need for uh, more organized food sh- food drives have oh, just yeah. been um, going out the door. And another one here, another one there, but so needed. So please share with us a little bit about Mahalo Malama Meals. Okay, so um, the Mahalo Malama Meals basically that was a banner that we had uh, made to thank, it's, it, that was a picture of my team of volunteers uh, in Molokai that helped distribute the foods to all of the uh, Kapuna Nidi families. And we wanted to show our appreciation for the organizers of Malama Meals. So it was Ahmad and his partners that helped distribute the meals. These are ready cooked meals that was flown over and we had a, a time uh, frame in which to deliver these meals immediately. So it was our grab the meals and everybody split to their designated uh, spots on uh, Molokai that they delivered the meals. And that was part of the drive as well. We'd go to the homes of the Kapunas and to the, all the needy families in Molokai and the expressions on their face is priceless. Um, they were so, just so, so appreciative just for a meal, you know, cause we don't know where their next meal is gonna be. And so uh, that Malama Meals banner was an important uh, a way in which we could show our appreciation. Wow, that's amazing. You know, and I, I understand that you helped to coordinate that and to bring it there to Molokai. I mean, like kudos to you for every little, you know, one more thing well done, you know, and all the work. And I know all the work and meetings and uh, coordinating that it takes to just even to have a simple food drive as that. But yeah. the reward at the end of the day is priceless. And it certainly is. It's, I know, know that that's what fuels you to continue to, con- you know, to continue. And then I, under, I also understand that your father instilled upon you and your sisters. So being of service to others is one of the greatest deeds Absolutely. one should do in their lifetime. Absolutely. And you know what? Kudos again to your daddy because yes. he's done a good job. His yeah. little girl has grown up along with all his other little girls and yeah. they're continuing in his legacy and his teaching. So your dad it must have been an amazing man. And I'm he was, honest. absolutely. He was, I, I know he's smiling proudly on all of us, you know, uh, being able to serve our people. You know, it was, a, as you mentioned, it's a lot of work. It was a lot of coordination. I, and I'm so blessed to have the most amazing people, volunteers on Molokai to help distribute these meals. We served over 45, 4,500 meals went out every week to our, our families. So it is, it is quite a, a, a task, but again, as you mentioned, the rewards are just priceless. And, and I know that by being a part of being of service to others, you know, it'll always be a part of me because it's what my dad always stressed to me, my sisters, wow. about giving up yourself at least one time in your life to do something for someone else. And, yeah. and of course, that's a natural for us anyway. So I love and that. And that's, you know, that's another thing that we have in common, Luana. A lot of people would say, oh yeah, when I get old, I go and volunteer, I go and donate. But you know what? So you and me, we didn't wait, like a lot of other mm-hmm. our friends, yeah. we didn't wait, we didn't say when we're old, you know, because we've been doing it for the last 20 and 30 years, yes. and now we're old, and we've been, we have 30 years under our belt, <laughs> so we didn't wait, so all you young, you kiki out there, don't wait, don't wait until, you know, you have only time to sit on the couch and watch Prices Right or something, get out there, volunteer, join a committee, and just do it, because it, it's so rewarding, it's priceless. But when, you, um, when your kids see you doing it, they want to do it too. And yes, I, exactly. I'm very blessed to have my kids be a part of uh, my meal distributions whenever I have a chance to volunteer to do that. It's like automatic. So again, it's, it's what we as parents uh, do that our kids mm-hmm. follow. And uh, by, by doing that as a, a wonderful way of uh, uh, showcasing the values that we still upon our family and our, our own children. Exactly. They and take you know, um, 
Family. I'd like to add at that one point is my daughter is not an academic or an athletic or she doesn't play a musical instrument. However, when she did go to college, they gave her a $48,000 scholarship. And I said, what? Did you make a mistake? Where did this come from? Why are you giving it to us? Wow. And they said, because she had like 14 years of community service under her belt. Mm -hmm. And I didn't let her take all the credit from the time she was five. Okay. She right. only could start taking credit from the time she was like seven. And then what it was, was if I didn't force her to do it, you know, like, come on, you got to help mommy. No, it was like, okay, mommy's going to go to the heart walk. If they woke up and if they came, that's when they got, I let them put it in their journal and get credit for it because it was of their will. And I know that the job was done because now they enjoy it and they become an addict to community service like their mother. So that's, yeah, so, so valuable, so valuable. Okay, so now years have passed and um, I see you on um, a Molokai a lot. I'm like, hey, what girlfriend is doing a Molokai? It's like expensive, go back and forth, back and forth. But oh I didn't realize you were spending a lot of time on Molokai. In fact, tell me that, yes. and then, I mean, you tell me that you have a home there and tell me about the beautiful life there on Molokai. Well, here, here's how, you know, uh, first of all, I've been in Molokai since we were little. Um, mm -hmm. uh, my, you know, we come from divorced parents. So my, my dad and my stepmom moved to Molokai. And of course me, uh, my sisters and I stayed with my mother, my stepfather in Laie. So of course we traveled back and forth during our youth and so on. And that was many, was, we, this is back in the seventies that we we're doing that. And then of course my sisters, one of them would live there for a bit and move back to Oahu and vice versa. I just did the traveling back and forth because on Oahu, I did a lot of my, uh, raising my, my own uh, family and my career and so forth. And then now that, you know, I'm a, my kids are all adults. They're, they're on their own. They're going off to college. One is married, has two children. Another one works uh, for a, a, a floor, floor laying company. And, and my, my two kids are in college, my own bi biological kids. I'm an empty nester. Right. So this is the time to head on over back to Molokai. To, to your roots. <laughs> yep, to my roots. And, um, uh, and I stayed on my father, my late father's um, five acres of uh, land in Ho'olehua. Now my father, uh, mind you, had a, a blueprint, a master blueprint that he designed for the purpose of developing the five acres there. One in particular, part of our land is like commercial zone. So he already knew when he selected that lot, he had plans for that lot. And part of it was to establish a cafe and then the farm to table, like what we have today now. I want to play with you. I want to come. <laughs> I already have you in the plans. <laughs> and it was all about servicing our, our people, mm. our community. You know, those who came to visit uh, would, would have their meals. So basically, it was farm to table, like what's the popular trend is today. And then he wanted to build a cultural center to showcase our Hawaiian oh. culture, our language, our, our through hula chant. Uh, learning of the Lua, the art of Lua, and so forth. So he wanted that built on the property as well. And then, of course, to, to, to um, the garden, the um, healing garden that he wanted built. He wanted there because of the Hawaiian herbs. Of course, as you know about Hawaiian herbs, the medicinal aspect of it. He wanted that. He also wanted a garden so that when people came over, they were able to walk through and see the most beautiful plants and flowers. They'd go mm -hmm. visit the, the uh, healing garden as well. And then, of course, Girl, this is where you come in. It's all about them tower gardens, right? <laughs> <laughs> go up, go up, grow up. Oh, yeah, grow we gotta up. go up not this way because it takes up a lot of land. So we gotta go right. up in less water as I've, I've learned. So that's right. some of the things I wanna implement in my father's property, but guess what that takes? Money. Money. So, lots and lots of money. So I have, I'm beholden to grants and so forth because of the cultural aspect of what my dad's uh, blueprints are about. And, we're, and I know that we're able to uh, uh, acquire uh, grant monies to help build this uh, for my, my father's wow. family. I'm the only one in my family that could do it because my sister, my younger sister lives in Washington, D.C. Then my older sister, and we're all a year apart, she runs the family chutney business that is in all of those stores today. And she's wow. been running that for many, many years. So middle sister here, yes. since I am an empty nester, went back home. Let's get to work, girl. Lots of time, lots of energy. I don't want nails, Kate. It's all dirt filled. <laughs> Long, long. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> right. so, but you know, I saw a picture, you just flicked over a picture and I saw one of the pictures. I put up one, which is of course caught my eye. It's such a beautiful sunset from your property. But Thank what you. you are doing on the other slide that I didn't submit is that you all were having a movie night in your yes. yard. 
And I love that because I always do that. And I put the oh big projector up and oh, everybody comes. Yeah, I love it. You know, the fact is that, you know, I, I can do more things on five acres, especially that one area that I showcase the hour. I get to look at that every day, the most beautiful sunset. It is just striking. Yeah, it was. It is gorgeous. It it is, is and gorgeous. then I have like uh, my, my family over. We have like um, all the tables there and then we have, Woo! we bring all our vines. Love it, love it. Oh, it it is yeah. so amazing. And the so, you know, nice. now we're, we're going to segue into another topic of your life, another chapter. You've always oh been one to make a big difference. And it only makes sense that you would want to represent the people of Molokai and, of course, of all oh, Native Hawaiian culture. Tell us how this, this decision come about for you to run for OHA. Well, uh, let's put it this way. It didn't happen overnight. Uh, you know, I, I was asked many years ago to run for OHA. And I just brushed it aside, didn't take it seriously. And plus, you know, timing is important, right? So mm -hmm. I was married at the time and I had my kids and my focus was my family first. So that I spent 20 plus years doing that. And mm -hmm. now that my kids are, you know, they're on their own now and so forth. I'm moving back to Molokai because they have their house here. Now I get my house there in Molokai, my dad's property. Um, and I was asked again, hey, Luana, we hear you back in Molokai. Because would you really consider, you know, running for OHA? And I'm like, I don't know about this. This is all, you know, what that takes. You're going to be putting yourself out there for the public, blah, 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 and so on. But the words that kept coming back to me over and over are those words my father said to be of service to others. Yes. And that was a deciding factor for me that if I could, while I'm here in Molokai, to do all what I needed to do, why not be of service to our Hawaiian community there? But not just, just besides Molokai, uh, our community, but, but everyone in general. And if I could do that, why not utilize this time to run for OHA? And, and that's how all of that happened. Now, wow. I, I, uh, I, I've never thought I would be in a position. You remember now, I have my comfort zone. We all have our comfort zones. But <laughs> taking yourself out of that comfort zone, just like running in a pageant, you're coming from your own back, you know, backyard, your own home. Now you got to go out and expose yourself to everybody. In a bathing yeah. suit. Yeah, in a bathing suit. That's, that's yeah. it. You need to be direct. And um, in heels. Um, and in heels, yeah, I, I challenge anybody to do that, okay? Yeah. <laughs> right, and to answer questions in front of everybody and so mm -hmm. forth. So I knew that I would be doing the same thing that I would be teaching my own uh, contestants to be able to step out of their comfort zone and to yes. do something different for once for themselves. This wow. one was not about me, it was about our Hawaiian community. And wow. that was the overall deciding factor on, on why I decided to go for it. Right. And in second, I was probably the last one to enroll or sign up. I, I became official candidate. So, And I bought, by the way, lots of prayers. Lots and lots of prayers. Lots of prayers behind you. Absolutely. And that's why when I saw that and I figured, you know what, I wanted to just showcase to the people of Hawaii your heart and your service, your community servant's heart yep. in all of this and for them to see and decide on that. And then, of course, all the different issues are yes. issues of the heart that you can un understand and research and dissect, and you're going to make the better decisions for the people. And Absolutely. I think that's the most valuable is that everyone sees your heart within the reasoning for you going in. So I'm just so proud of you and just um, yes. just 100% behind what you are doing. Mm -hmm. And um, I know that you know another cause very deep in your heart is the breast cancer awareness which is this Absolutely. month october is breast cancer awareness month that's we're wearing pink <laughs> so you combine two great causes to wait for so talk to us a little bit about your commitment with the breast cancer uh, society sure well the reason for breast cancer is uh, partially because i volunteered uh with that organization to help raise awareness um, and part of it's through the susan g cohen uh, I've also participated in the Susan G. Komen runs and attended their gala events and so forth. I've had my state pageant queens also volunteer for this wonderful organization. And uh, so I knew that uh, breast cancer was a, an area that it's close to my heart. I also had several former, uh, a couple of my former Mrs. Hawaii's have also suffered mm -hmm. from breast, breast cancer and they are survivors today. So I knew this would be a, a wonderful way in which I could uh, be a part of continuously especially for this month uh, October being breast cancer awareness and the color pink gotta have the pink so <laughs> yes and you know there are so many people um, very dear to us in our pageant world uh, of course um, Angela Dr. Angela Pratt 
Yes. Um, she is 100% behind, behind all of this, wearing pink at all her events and everything she does, along with her mother, Barbara Pratt. Yes, yes, yes. Uh -huh. Very, very dynamically involved and, with and that's everything. That's part of why I, I got myself involved, because of them and uh, their support. And so naturally, if you're going to follow your friends, uh, it's for a good cause. And so that's where that, that whole pink um, theme that come about on the, uh, in my, uh, in, in the month of October and what I'm going to be doing for the rest of this month, as you may know. <laughs> mm -hmm. And you've been representing well. I mean, I, another good friend of ours is Ivalani Seyu. And oh, she, like yourself, has a healing garden and, you know, just welcomes all Wahini to come so that they can come. And I'm sure you're going to have the same invite for your property and your, oh, your venture. Is wait. that people can come there and just, just be with nature and heal. To be absolutely. still in nature and to be and to be healed and that's what we all need is to have a place of safe haven that we can go and feel comfort that we want to just let our bodies re let down so that our bodies can take over to heal itself as we're doing the right things and giving it the right tools to heal yeah. yes, so absolutely. i'm excited to see and uh, be a part of this from the very beginning and uh, see it come to fruition so oh, yeah. uh, i'm going to keep you in on my radar and watch <laughs> what you're doing so, you know, I know that you've been doing two things. You've been campaigning, waving right. you know, on the sides of the road. Uh, you're, you rally your supporters and friends to bring awareness for breast cancer as well. So not just vote for me for OHA, but be more aware of breast cancer as we are right in the month. Absolutely. And how brilliant is it that you are doing the two things that matter uh, so much to women? So tell us about your sign waving events. I know you had one in Kahala area. Yes, so I've had several events. We've had three already. We got several more this week and the next week until the end of the month. And of course, I'd love to do it all year long, but no can because everybody yeah. has their real jobs to get to. But the pink campaign, this, this is what happened. Just a little quick story on it. Um, we had ordered, back in September, we had ordered uh, more um, signs for the general um, elections and, and to post more of it. And it was in the colors of blue and green. And they came in bright neon pink. And uh -huh. there's 50 of them. And I'm like, oh my God, what are we going to do with pink signs? And this is awful and blah, blah, blah. And of course, we weren't going to pay for it. But they sent in the correct ones later. But in the meantime, we were stuck with pink. So I thought, wow. wait a minute. Next month. Wait a minute. Uh, wow. October, that was a ball oh. moment. Use the oh. pink. Oh. Right. knew he, what he was doing. Oh, he yeah. did that for exactly. a reason. Oh my there gosh, I'm so reason. excited. So with that pink signs, I said, wait a minute, let's incorporate pink as part of the pink campaign where we have the sign, but also I had other signs done that says the pink cancer awareness with the ribbon on it. And we right. those signs along with my own campaign sign. So we did a double, you know. Yes, of, you of, see, of that. I so tell you, you, you are chosen. You are chosen <laughs> with divine appointment. Kiyoku is right by you, helping you through this all. I yeah. tell you, it could not be even more uh, efficient and You effective. know what, Wendy? You know what the best part? So when we're standing on Kala, uh, um, Kahala, you got mm -hmm. all the people going by, and the lights comes to a stop, right? all the cars stop. And you see the women. They're like this looking at us, and they're praying and throwing kisses and yes. thanking us yeah. for the, you know, having the, the signs yes. there. It wasn't just Brilliant. about, about Brilliant. breast cancer, and they loved it. And Brilliant. then they started to catch on. More and more people wanted to jump on my pink campaign. And I've got more volunteers because of the pink campaign because they're what? Breast cancer survivors. Amen. So, yes. And you're in support of them. And we want to help them through these times. Yes. yes, yes wow. Yes. <laughs> I'm so excited. Well, Luana, we have yes. uh, come to an end of our talk. But yes. get, uh, get me your schedule for the next week because I will commit to coming out. I will wear pink. Yes. And yes. I want to be out there with you all. So we just want to say mahalo. Mahalo keaku for bringing Luana to us. Mahalo keaku for your heart and for making a difference now, today, yesterday, today, and our future. So vote Luana Alafa. I give hey, you a plug. You don't have <laughs> to be Oha. full guy. You can just do vote. <laughs> it's open <right>. to everyone. <laughs> Thank Mahalo you so for much. being with us so much. Mahalo. Aloha, everybody.